Hello everyone, welcome to your morning coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, February 19th. This is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Energies are fluid, so this does not have to be something that will happen today. It could have been something that happened in the past. It could be something that's coming on down the pipeline for you, or it just may not be something that resonates with you at all. <laughs> Uh, either way, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Um, 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 um. Uh, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. Also, you can uh, like my page on Facebook. That's a great idea. I am doing a sale right now for the month of February. All mirror readings are 20% off. If you would like some more information on that, go ahead. Ooh. Go ahead and shoot me an email and we'll get you all set up, okay? So let's just get into it, guys. Let's see what we've got today. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, February 19th. 2019 thank you so much spirit all right guys so um keep in mind we do have a full moon tonight oh yes full moon in virgo so we've already had some information come out for the full moon uh, I believe it came out over the weekend and it came out yesterday. Excuse me. Um, so, I don't know. Let's see what else comes out here. But just a reminder, we do have that full moon today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tuesday, February 19th, 2019. Just one more. And we're good to go here. Take a sip of my tea. Mm. All right, guys. Let's see what we've got today. Tuesday, February 19th. Tuesday, February 19th. The Six of Swords in reverse, huh? The Two of Pentacles in reverse. Interesting. So far we have the Six of Swords in reverse and the Two of Pentacles in reverse. I'm gonna pull one more time just to see if we can get a little bit more and then I'll move forward. Oh, oh. looky here. <laughs> no. All right. Overall energy is the Ten of Swords. Okay. So, I don't know. This doesn't, this looks kind of weird, to be honest. We've got all of this in reverse up here. Uh, this doesn't feel, I'm, I'm not going to lie. This doesn't feel good. Someone's stuck up in their head, and it all ha and it has all to do with the status quo. Okay, so the first thing I'm seeing here, well, the first thing that came out is the Six of Swords, the Two of Pentacles, in all the reverse, and then. Everything else followed it. We have the Eight of Cups, the Four of Pentacles, and the Knight of Swords. And all of these, I'm sorry, not the Knight, the King of Swords. And all of these cards are reversed here. Oh, you can't see it. All of these are reversed here. And um, this King of Swords energy is what's kind of holding this down. Um... There are some individuals that are 
resisting this shift. We knew this. But the Two of Pentacles, I mean, it's not like it's anything new, to be honest. But this Two of Pentacles here is giving me the energy that it, ha that it has been for some time now of being in between worlds. Um, many of us have been feeling like this right now. It's almost as if someone is refusing to move forward. Six of Swords in reverse. Refusing to let go and walk away from things that no longer serve. Four, uh, eight of Cups, Four of Pentacles, both in reverse. Just holding on for dear life. Even though, even though you have these energies of the Ten of Swords here. Okay. Even though things have come to completion, things have come to an end, it's like holding on for dear life here. This King of Swords energy is the reason why. This is the individual or the personality that is up in their head, resisting change in any way, shape, or form. This doesn't have to be someone external to you. This could be you, um, but it's definitely coming from the masculine side of the equation. So this could be someone that embodies more of the masculine energy, or it could be your inner masculine energy that's really putting up a fight. Really resisting here. Now, the Five of Swords, the Hierophant, and the Knight of Wands. What I'm seeing with this is um, the matrix reality. The three-dimensional reality, um, I'm seeing like energies of the patriarchy. Um, I keep hearing indoctrination. So what's happening? Uh, what I really think is happening here, okay, well, I'm oh, sorry. Let me, let me explain these cards a little bit more. The Five of Swords, the Hierophant, and the Knight of Wands. So these are the cards that are upright. But this Five of Swords here with this Hierophant, it doesn't, it, I'm, I'm having trouble putting this into words. I don't really have, don't really know what words to use for this to effectively convey what I'm feeling. But it's like, um, the energies of the patriarchy or the status quo, you know, what we already know, what we've been dealing with. Needing to fit in, keeping up appearance, um, staying, society, the, the, the norm, okay, the norm basically, is what's driving this person or you or these people towards moving forward in the same ways they have been. But it's self-defeating, it's detrimental. Obviously, I mean, or we wouldn't be in this great time of change, right? So this energy up here is being resisted. Moving forward, mental healing, you know, shifting worlds, logical thought, seeing things clearly. All of that is being resisted to preserve the status quo, and it's unfortunate. Um, it's really, it feels really painful for the person that is in this position. It does not feel comfortable at all. It's like you're, you're, you may not be conscious of it, you may not be conscious of it, but you're at the end of the situation here with the Ten of Swords, but there's resistance in com bringing it to completion. It's almost as if this person has gotten comfortable in this Ten of Swords energy. They found complacency. They found that what, they, what they're calling to be balance. But it's definitely not freedom. You might think you're free. 
but you're really only free within the confines of the establishment, the Harfen. Now, for some of you, this could just be This could be what you're gearing to up towards. Like, you have been spending all of your conscious time and energy and effort within these confines, we'll say. Within the realm of the norm. And now you're moving towards moving away, Six of Swords, Eight of Cups. You're moving towards shifting realities, starting that, that, that journey to where many of us have come to already in which we're in between worlds and releasing the past. But the thing that's still tripping you up right now is this King of Swords in reverse. This feels universal all around. For whoever is dealing with this, this King of Swords in reverse is the detriment. In order to really move forward, you have to get this King of Swords energy turned upside uh, uh, upright. You have to be logical. You have to be honest, sincere. You have to be objective. You have to be able and willing to see things maybe as they are, if you've been missing that. Um, or see as many points to the situation as possible, as many sides to the situation as possible. Get as much perspective as possible. Now, something that just popped in, that could be why the King of Swords is in reverse here, because you're trying to get as many, view, as many points of view as possible. You're trying to hear as many arguments towards the case as you can, trying to gather as much information as you can. So for some of you, if that's the case, the, if the King of Swords is in reverse just because you're in the process of, I don't know, gaining the research or whatnot, you're just not ready to make a decision yet. Okay, that's fine. But for a lot of you, this feels like negatively aspected King of Swords, overly logical, overly analytical, probably lying, making things up, playing hella mind games, but that's all just to preserve the status quo. That's that Five of Swords energy. It's a situation in which someone could really, it's almost like a pathological lying, a pathological liar who is bound to just get himself trapped, him or herself trapped in a lie eventually. This could be because you're having to tell all these lies just to save face, keep up appearance. Or you're just telling all these lies because you're used to it, whatever. Eventually it's gonna catch up to you. But that's that Five of Wands, Swords energy. The Knight of Wands is someone that I, I'm seeing someone that's just extremely overzealous. Um, and got some serious blinders on, but those blinders belong to the establishment, the, her the Hierophant. And it's almost as if someone is happily blinded to what's really going on around them, but I don't know, eventually that's gonna wear off. Something's gonna happen and it's gonna wake you up potentially. Well, not potentially. It Eventually, you're going to wake up, whoever this is for. If you know of anyone in your life that is going through this, I would try and avoid them at this moment. Because they seem very reckless with this Knight of Wands energy and the Five of Swords. Um, and it's almost like it's a last-ditch effort to preserve what little bit of hold this establishment has. Now, I'm not saying the overall establishment. I'm just talking about whatever this person is dealing with, whomever this person is dealing with. They're just trying to keep control of whatever little bit they have left. Because like I said, you're at the Ten of Swords here.
it's almost as if the universe is just like biding its time waiting for that moment to come in and probably deal out a tower moment just, just they're just looking for that opportunity to be honest just patiently waiting okay so now we're gonna get into some clarification here shuffle and then we're going to clarify this top row here all right so the six of swords two of pentacles eight of cups four of pentacles and the king of swords all in reverse here let's talk about this for a little bit and see what we've got just a little bit of clarification please spirit oh okay well that's good ace of books ah you see that's very interesting. Okay. That's very, very interesting. All right. Underneath the deck, we have, okay, the Ten of Wands. Ten, ten. Completion here. All right? Now, it's funny because when I was talking about the King of Swords in reverse... Oh, sorry. I hit the mic. Um, <sighs> Excuse me. When I was talking about the King of Swords in reverse, at one point it came out that, you know, you could just be trying to find it some new information. Uh, trying to get a new perspective. Very much hang the hanged man like, right? Well, here we are. Hanged man with the devil. Yeah. So definitely working on getting some new perspective here because someone is in the process of writing a new book, starting a new chapter. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. You have the ace of books with the queen of cups. So... There's a whole new compassionate person that's about to emerge from this cocoon, I guess you could say it is. Um, but in order to do this, you gotta face the devil. Okay, you have to face the whatever's holding you back, you have to face the toxicity, the narcissism, the codependency. And it's so funny because yesterday I was just thinking, you know, as someone does every once in a while, but I was thinking um, relationships nowadays, what we know to be a relationship is very much rooted in codependency. And that's all across the board from a friendship to family to romance to even business situations you know we're all very much codependent um and i really feel like that's part of what someone is facing here there there's breaking free from the status quo for sure and for some of you, yes, you are, you are resisting, okay? So that's what the devil with the hanged man is talking about here. Some of you are very, very complacent. You're very comfortable. But it's like, well, who wants to be a puppet, you know? Now, others of you are working on coming out of this cycle here so you have all of these energies lots of energies of moving forward um, shifting world shifting dynamics shifting realities releasing the past releasing anything that may have been holding you back all the detriment but you're in the process of gaining a new perspective in order to really facilitate that with the hanged man and this king of swords in reverse 10 10 10 of wands 10 of swords completion for some of you, this might be a very like a last ditch effort, a final, a, a final major upheaval of some heavy core stuff that's happening. And of course, this is a great time to, for this to happen with the full moon tonight. Okay, full moons are times of release. So, I guess I want to take a little bit of what I said before back in the sense that the, 
this could be what someone, what a few of you, quite a number of you are working on. And it could be that in the past you've been holding this King of Swords in reverse energy. But now you're making that shift. And for a lot of you, it's a situation in which you've been basically been in this straight jacket for too long. You've been into this in this hanged man energy for long enough now where it's started finally starting to like shift. Your vision, your feelings, your understanding is starting to shift. Basically, you're learning the lesson of being in this hanged man, this precarious position. You're, you're getting it now. And with the Ace of Books here, or, or excuse me, um, the Ace of Wands in this deck, it's books. I'm using the Epic Tarot here. Ace of Books is the Ace of Wands. This is starting a new book, starting a new chapter. I just heard for some of you starting your life over again. But keep in mind, you're not really starting over. If you're, yes, there may be a situation where it's almost like a reset button has been pushed, but that doesn't mean that you've lost everything that you've learned from the past. Okay. So now, Five of Swords, Hierophant, Knight of Wands. It's, it's like this Hierophant energy wants you or these people or whoever to stay in this Knight of Wands energy. This Knight of Wands energy is not the king, not the queen. Definitely not the page, but definitely not the king or the queen. Still takes orders from the king and the queen, okay? And I'm seeing this person as quite naive, very much having blinders on, blindly following whatever those in command tell them to do, instead of thinking for themselves here. And I feel like this energy that I'm getting from this Knight of Wands, is, it's almost as if they're very happy to do it. So with that said, it's almost like, well, what... What, what? At that point, if you're happy doing it, then why are we have even having this conversation? It's kind of how I feel about it. But for some of you, you're starting to wake up from this. And it's not even like you have to take some sort of physical action right now. Just the intention is, is really all you need to get the ball rolling in this direction so if you have if you're holding an intention to change to, to to end this cycle ten of swords ten of wands to end these things to bring it to completion to see this to to, to have this um change in perspective and to move forward in your life that's all you need the universe will follow suit from there obviously there are going to be moments where you're going to need to take steps but it starts with the intention okay all right so Let's clarify. Five of Swords, Hierophant, Knight of Wands. Please, Spirit. Hmm. Mm. Wow. Wow, wow. Okay, underneath the deck, you have the King of Wands now. Okay, so for some of you, this was a big lesson for you in taking your power back. Um knowing who you are and what it is you want. For some of you, you're already in this King of Wands energy and you're just biding your time. You're just like holding back, waiting, because you have, look, the Wheel of Fortune. What this is saying, especially clarifying this section here, is luck is changing. The power dynamic is changing. It's changing from that of the institution to that of the individual. And then the individuals will come together to form a new teamwork or a, a, a network, a teamwork situation. That's, that's the energy that I'm getting from this Wheel of Fortune here. Okay, the power dynamic is changing and it's happening naturally. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, okay. Ooh. Oh, this is quite beautiful, you guys. Okay, so um, I'm going to start here. We have the first card that actually flew out of the deck, if you guys noticed that, was the Ten of Swords, and it flew out in reverse. Okay, and that's here with the Seven and the Eight of Swords, too. Um, okay, I get it. So those who are in power here, 
represented by the Hierophant and this Five of Swords energy, they're aware. They are very much aware that their time is running short. Now, this doesn't have to be someone physical, okay? This could just be um, fourth dimensional beings that many of us have been talking about that are that have been manipulating us. So who are they? Those are like what the Arctur not the Arcturans, the um, the reptilians, um, whatever just shadow beings that have been basically manipulating us. You know, in this matrix system, they know that their time is running thin, and so they're trying to do things. Oh shoot. They're trying to do things, I'm sorry, I'm trying to light my sage. They're trying to do things to, you know, keep the veil, keep the keep the um, the mystery, keep us in control, blah, 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 blah. But again, their time is short and they know it. And they're very much trapped. Come on, go out, go out, go out, thank you. They're very much trapped here. Eight of Swords, okay? Now, if we're speaking in the in terms of these energies that have been trying to have been manipulating us on an energetic level, uh, many of them are trapped in the well, yeah, are trapped in the fourth dimension because they refuse to develop their connection with source. They would just rather siphon energy off of other beings, and so they can't move forward. Eight of Swords. The only way they could move forward is if they were to work on their connection with Source, right? But instead, they're going to try and just deceive. Okay. But then, on the other side, we have the Ace of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, the Two of Cups, and the World. So, what breaks you free from this manipulation, the status quo, all that hoopla? Union within. Two of Cups, King of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. Bring that into fruition in the physical world. Letting your light shine, says Spirit. That brings all of this struggle, all of this strife, all of these challenges to completion, the world. And you start new. Again, this is not starting new as in you have forgotten everything that you learned. No, you're taking all that with you, but you're starting a new book or a new chapter, however you want to see it. Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Books. Excuse me, Ace of Discs in this deck. Ace of Books. That's really great. And you know, it's really funny. When you think about it, this was all really just designed really, really well. Because all of this struggle, everything that we've dealt with, with all this manipulation and whatnot, it's only really served to help us come into balance help us find that union between masculine and feminine within. That's really awesome, you guys. Alrighty. Now, I'm gonna close out the reading. Whoops, we're gonna get some oracle guidance here. Good Lord. <laughs> we're going to start with the Animal Spirit Guides. And then we're going to close with the Crystal Mandala deck. So I'm just going to take one card. Best guidance for the day. Or at least just in relation to this reading here. Sorry guys, I keep hitting the mic. One card please, Spirit. Go. 
panther. That is freaking beautiful. Oh my God, yes. And it makes a lot of sense too. It makes a ton of sense. Wait, that doesn't go there. This does. Okay. Oh my God, this is like basically the panther. This is like the tower of the animal spirit. I told you, for some of you, the, um, yeah, for some of you, there's a tower moment coming and um, you may feel it brewing or you've been in resistance to it. And like I said, the universe is just waiting for that perfect time to strike, to just slip on in there and tear everything down. Okay, here we go. Panther, annihilation of the unnecessary, purging. The panther won't stand to see our growth or energy stagnate. Instead, it pounces into our lives and causes all kinds of havoc, with the ultimate intention of bringing us towards more fulfilling lives. It's unexpected, uncomfortable, and sometimes feels devastating, but after all the dust clears, it's easy to see the panther's wisdom at work. We've all been through these experiences, and they've made us better people. Trust that the panther's journey always leads to a brighter place. When in balance, Panther is brave and, and productive. When out of balance, Panther is self-destructive. To bring into balance, one must get rid of the unnecessary. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So now we're going to close the reading. with one card from the Crystal Mandala deck. All right. Best message, please, Spirit, to close out the reading for today. Okay, well, we got two of them here. We got two. We have card number 35, Ascended Master Babaji and Diamond, so it shall be. And card number 15, Archangel Raphael and Malachite. Grace for the grand gesture. Okay. Here we go. So it shall be. We bring you the blessing of so it shall be. There are times when you will go through your life journey without any sign of what's going to happen. You may be working hard to heal an issue or build your dream and not really know if you are ever going to be successful. You may hope for the best, but not know whether you should really expect the worst. You may sense that the universe is asking you to trust in how things are going to turn out, and yet giving up your uncertainty is difficult. That usually means total and uncompromising commitment to, uh, is, difficult as, is difficult too. Where there is uncertainty, there is often hesitation and procrastination. Spirit doesn't want you to miss out on your dreams because you lack faith and therefore are holding yourself back from going for it with all you have within. So you be, are being given the blessing of divine decree, of absolute confirmation of success, and the divine granting of a wish fulfilled. Switch your thinking from possibility to inevitability. It is not a question of if, but when. Know that you are going to succeed and commit yourself completely. Don't hold back. Go for it with gusto. According to divine will, you shall manifest the highest expectation, I'm sorry, the highest expression of your divine destiny this lifetime. So it shall be. Well, that's beautiful. Finally, Card number 15, grace for the grand gesture. It's like, it feels like spirit's really setting you guys up for something here. Mm -hmm. We bring you the gift of grace for the grand gesture. Although there are times when even the smallest act, such as choosing to think a positive thought, is enough to transform your world, there also comes a time for the leap of faith the grand gesture of unconditional trust that will free you from the past and empower the universe to gift you with a new future. The grand gesture is the big step, the willingness to, stay, to say to the universe 
I trust you and I know it's time for life as I have known it to give way for a bigger, bolder experience and I am willing to allow you to lead me into it. You then make an effort which confirms your declaration and empowers the universe to reward the faith you have demonstrated. The grand gesture cannot be forced. If it comes from a place of should or uncertainty, then you are not ready. The grand gesture must be unconditional. It must be something you offer, not for what you can get in return, although the rewards will be rich, but because you are willing to offer something of yourself in service to love. When it comes from this place, the grand gesture is a trigger for divine grace to express itself in your life in an entirely new way, surpassing all expectations and showering you with blessings. Wow. So there you have it, guys. Major change is happening here. For many, of, for a lot of you, you're really releasing the old, releasing the status quo. And yeah, that can be scary. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day. I will be doing happy hour tonight, so I will see you guys then. I look forward to seeing you then tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Other than that, have a great Tuesday, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.